why don't we get started um, as promised my kitchen uh, I'm Madalena if I have not met you yet I'm the DB program chief here at Wistot and this is the trans CAC meeting which is the transportation consultant advisory committee meeting if you want information and are interested in what's happening at Wistot with um, consultant work, specifically um, DBE um, work here at WISDOT. This is the correct meeting to be in. I'm going to go over a quick roll here. Let you know first that uh, Scott Lowry is unable to join us today, as is Brian Porter. Uh, so they're regulars who will join next time around. And I see that Angela Poppenhagen is here. Good morning. At Stevens. Yeah. And Jada Bigham is here, our representative from FHWA. Good morning, Jada. Good morning. Bruce Spann is here from Span. Hello, Bruce. Hello, Madalena. Uh, Christina Crane from M Squared. Thanks for being oh. here, Christina. Good morning. Dale at OES. Thanks for being here today. Good morning, Madalena. Good morning. And Elia at PE. Oh, professionals, tell me, is it PE professionals? Is that the name? Is that right? Yes, pro professional engineering services. How are you doing? There we go. Services. Yes, doing well. Thanks for joining. Um, Deb Evers is here from the uh, Southeast Region Consultant Unit Supervisor. Hello, I think. everybody. Nice to see you. Harvind at Singh is here. Thanks for being here, Harvind. Benji is here. I can't recall if we've been able to make a formal introduction yet to Benji at TransCAC. Uh, she is our program engineer. Keisha is here from PRISM. Welcome, Keisha. Good morning. Kathleen Panic is here on the DBE team and the organizer of this meeting. Good morning. Mitch Patoka is going to represent for consultant services in BPD. Thank you, Mitch. Mary Beth Pettit at Grafe. Thank you for being here. We are excited for your presentation with Harvind mid meeting. Good morning. Rock. I hope we don't let you down. My goodness. Oh my gosh. <laughs> just having participation and real um, engagement here that's not me just talking to everybody the whole time, um, I think will be uh, welcomed by everyone. <laughs> um, Randy Crump, welcome from PRISM. Hi there. Hey, and Rosalind Roberson, our DB Support Services Coordinator uh, and the annual event guru. Okay. Well, oh, Matt Kunstman, I see you now too. Hello. Good oh, yes. morning. How are you? <laughs> nice to see you. It was nice to see you over the last week too. Um, uh -huh. I see Dave Bros on the screen. Hello, Dave Bros. It was nice to see you as well. Uh, and Michael Rivera, welcome. Okay, did we miss anyone else who hopped in in between? I don't think so. Oh, Jesse Friend, there you are. Oh, nope, he's just a tentative. Okay, good. Anyone else, just let us know. Um, put in the chat and we'll make sure we um, get you listed here as uh, attending the meeting. And uh, with that, I think we can move over to Kathleen who can go um, briefly over the minutes from the last meeting. Yes, thank you, Madalena. Um, mm -hmm minutes from the last meeting. This was from uh, October 26, 2022. Uh, we had a welcome and a roll call from Madalena. Introduction to Brian Porter, who is the new consultant services section chief. Uh, review of the minutes from me. And then uh, Brian took over and provided a consultant services update. Uh, for fiscal year 2022, there was 137 million in federal funds, DBE goal 12.41%, which equals about 17 million for uh, the consultant side. And overall, um, uh, this goal was exceeded. Uh, fiscal year 2022 was about 29 million coming in from the consultant side um, with a goal of about 21%. Uh, 
Uh, Brian also discussed the, cons uh, the construction fair, which was held virtually, um, which minimizes time away from the busy construction months. Uh, stats are indicated in the minutes below. And Engineering Opportunity Day coming up uh, next month in February 2023. Uh, next, we moved on to the DBE updates uh, with Madalena. Again, uh, goal at that point in time, which was achieved 12.54%. Uh, this was pending additional construction and consultant commitments. Uh, uniform report uh, will uh, will will be presented to FHWA on December 1st, 2022. Um, and overall, there was a lot of strategies discussed as uh, indicated in the minutes uh, for increasing DBE participation. And um, again, these are all outlined in the minutes. Uh, there was phone outreach, coaching, mobilization loan, um, DBE support services, which we encourage everybody to take a look at, uh, scholarships provided through Scallop Milwaukee, um, the small purchase contract pilot was discussed, and um, there's some still areas there in the southeast region that we're still taking a look at. And then also um, engaging the group of prime consultants at ACEC, some of the feedback and recommendations were also listed in the minutes. Um, the annual DBE workshop and networking summit was discussed, again, coming up in March. Um, registration is now open and opened uh, back on November 28, 2022. Um, M-squared, uh, Ham from M-squared uh, Engineering discussed uh, possibly coordinating some events in the future. So that's something that we'll be taking a look at. And then also the DBE Consultant Cuff Review, um, which we'll also go over at this meeting was discussed. We had an in industry check-in and then some closing comments uh, with the next meeting being today. So we look forward to a good meeting today. Thank you. Great, thank you, Kathleen. Does anyone have anything to add or edit from those meeting minutes? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands. We do also post our meeting information and um, recordings after the meetings online. So if you miss one and you wanna go back and, and uh, look at a statistic or something, you can always find that online. So since I'm not hearing any one uh, with changes here, can we move to approve the minutes? Anybody? I suppose I, I can move. move. To Oh, okay, say, Benji, you're the minutes. Good. Is that Benji? All right, then I'll second it and we're going to say that works. Um, so thank you, Kathleen. On to consultant services updates. We will have Mitch Patoka present where we're at with DBE attainment. Thank you, Mitch. All right. All right. So we are through the first quarter of the federal fiscal year. <clears throat> And so far, we've executed about $41 million worth of contracts in those three months. And our overall um, DB attainment is just shy of 23%. Um, highlights of significant achievement here um, from the June 20, 2022 solicitation is for construction oversight of I-43 in Milwaukee County. And then coming down to our projections for DBE um, in our carryover that would list all solicitations prior to July of 2022. Um, currently looking at about $50 million worth of scheduled work and a significant amount of DBE um, participation on those contracts. And those include design on I-41 from Appleton to Green Bay and then I-41 construction oversight in Milwaukee County. Um, for construction fair 2022, um, we still have nearly all of our contracts that are being negotiated and finalized. Um, on those, we're currently anticipating about a 21% DBE achievement. Um, the projected construction fair um, should be coming up into our executed contracts over the next couple of months as uh, construction is authorized. 
Um, on this sheet, you'll see we have currently a pretty high budget number. Um, we're always looking at that. I don't think we're going to expect our budget to be quite that high, um, but there are um, there is that three month difference between when the state fiscal year and federal fiscal year ends. Um, that sometimes creates a little bit of ambiguity as to where projects are going to fall. Um, but overall, we're still looking at meeting our goal with just under or just over 17 percent um, for the overall federal fiscal year. So are there any questions about our um, DB attainment or projections? No, not from me. And I think this looks um, really good, helps us to see that we are on track thus far. Um, we'll be paying attention to how uh, we're affected by KL no longer being a DBE. And uh, that may uh, cause us to look at setting some more project level goals. But at this point, um, we're going to sort of monitor the situation and, and we also do work with the regions where there are particularly good opportunities that look like we should add a goal. Um, and to note, which I'm not sure this group uh, that we've talked about design build much in this group, but the design build projects do also have um, a strong consultant um, participation. And so we track that through on the construction side, but we're also seeing um, that DBEs are involved in that, those projects as well. And so maybe as we move forward in, into this year, we can be sharing some of that uh, participation with you as well, because it's it's also significant in, in that area. So with that, many thanks, Mitch. Um, I guess you uh, answered all the burning questions before they came, so good job. Um, and I think what we can do next is have Benji give us the overall picture uh, to show you where we're at towards our overall goal attainment uh, with construction and um, modifications to construction and the uh, consultant piece all put together in one. Okay. Thank you. Thank um, you. Share my screen here. Thanks, Madalena. Um, so what you're looking at is our attainment report. Um, through January, I do want everyone to note that um, the January figures are still um, not complete as we do have some projects in construction that are still under review. Um, but as you can see here, uh, so far we've had um, about 432 million in contract uh, dollars. We've achieved uh, an assigned goal right now, 43 million um, for the first quarter, giving us a DBE percent of 8.75. Our total commitment with neutral participation is about 52,660. Um, one of the things I really want to focus on here too is our contractors have been doing a great job with after contract award and execution uh, through DBE modifications. And through January, we have an additional $1.1 million in DBE participation, again, after execution. Um, we're doing really well on our GFEs. Uh, for this first quarter, we've had six requests and um, those six requests have been approved. Right now, for our construction services federal funds year to date, we've had about 17.7 million out there. Um, an estimate of funds for the consultant side is about 157 million in Fed funds. And right now, as uh, Mitch said earlier, we're at about 23% or four, uh, just under 4.1 million in DBE commitments. So. Right now, our overall DBE attainment is around 12.86%. And again, these numbers fluctuate um, very often as we get more projects approved, get more modifications in after execution. So we're doing pretty well um, for our first quarter. And the other thing I wanted to, um, as I said, 
show you the utilization report, and this is for contractors bringing in DBE dollars after execution. So far for this year, we've had just under 400 um, requests made. There are 45 that have to be reviewed. The DBE team is processing over 290 of them right now, um, and we've had a total dollar amount of just over 1.5 million in additions, um, just under 500,000 in reductions, and this is where our 1.1 um, million in additional DBE participation comes in. Are there any questions on that? Well, thank you, Benji. I think um, I think that helps to explain the way you explain it, um, what could look like a very complex chart. Um, and so we're always happy to answer questions if you all have them. Um, outside the meeting, what we're really trying to show there is that the consultant dollars and the construction dollars come together towards our overall annual 12.41%, uh, which we're looking at that around $940 million in construction that you saw there um, in federal funds. So, um, so we still have a ways to go, but trending in the right direction. So thanks very much, Benji. Thank you. And, Sure. And I will share my screen. And um, oh, I love that they always come up. Um, OK. <clears throat> so where are we at looking back at federal fiscal year 2022? Our DBE commitments uh, put us over that overall annual goal of 12.41%. So you can see here we hit 13.75. Uh, the combined consultant and construction commitments, also including those modifications that Benji was showing you, um, that ended up at 139 million overall. And um, that represented a, a lot of good participation in consulting and construction. Thought it might be helpful for you to just see our goal achievement here. Past five years, uh, where have we been? Uh, 2018, had some big construction work going on. I think that's the zoo. So that's why you saw that that major 13.10%. Um, 2019, we were uh, we were low. We had the same 12.38%. So this is that triennial 12.38 again, 2020. 2020 is when we first started collecting that after contract execution, um, those dollars on the construction side. And we started to realize a, a nice boost there, uh, which contributed uh, quite significantly then in 2021, uh, where we were about two percentage points over the goal. We had 20 million approximately in those after um, contract modifications and the consultant side also was around, I want to say 23% of the federal funds. So robust in both programs. And uh, 2022, we just had submitted in December and um, exceeded the goal again, about 29 million in um, after contract execution. And I think actually it was about 29 million in consultant commitments also, uh, as well as interestingly, about 29 million in MBE dollars and i i like to mention that when i remember because that achievement is on um, state funds the and the state fund portions of projects that might have federal funds but the the state of wisconsin has a goal to use um five percent of our state dollars for minority-owned businesses that are certified under the mbe program and uh so that that program is also doing robust in um robustly in uh in our commitments overall and has has continued to go up so i like to mention it just because it's showing that wistot doesn't just stop with trying to meet a db goal but we are trying to integrate um, minority owned firms through um, all all types of projects uh, so we're looking here at a basic um, distribution across our uh, ethnic groups Beginning 2018, um, looking now to 2022, um, you see stability in many of the groups, not, not a lot of change. Um, some change to note from last year to this year, uh, the Hispanic American group um, did grow 
um, fairly significantly in the commitments here. We've got a little bit of a bump here from 2021 to 2022. Uh, the subcontinent Asian American, I know it looks small, but that that actually did double their percent their participation. So um, we're happy to see that. Um, Hispanic American grew a little bit. Uh, looks like Black American stayed about stable, though we did see more participation from um, Black American female-owned companies, and that's an area we're really working on because it's very fairly low commitment overall. Asian Pacific American um, also grew, and then the Caucasian American-owned group dropped by about five percent of the uh, the overall. So uh, we're still uh, looking at how do we um, get these lines to be more in the same level across groups. Um, we can see that 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 has changed a bit. There's a, a lot of variables that go into this, though, um, particularly the type of work that a firm does. So part of our charge as well is to help the um, the non the, the minority owned firms to start to diversify in the type of work they do so that they can get contracts of bigger dollars. Um, I often give the example that, you know, if you own one truck, you can only um, get so far there. And in trucking, the way you're going to make money is to be a broker, really. And uh, so that's that's can be fairly limited in, in what you can gain. But if we can develop more firms who are already doing electrical work, maybe, and get them in, engaged in our jobs or landscaping firms. So that's something that we're, we're also working on. And, uh, and I'll go, I can go into more in-depth uh, charts, but really I wanted to just give you all an update now of where we landed and show you a comparison. And that kind of closes out my update from 2022. And Kathleen will uh, talk about where we're at with this, with the consultant cough process as we closed out the first year of doing it for uh, consulting. Yes, thank you. Um, so consultant cough, as many, as many of you are aware, uh, we did complete Consultant Cuff monitor monitoring for the first time last year. Um, Cuff stands for commercially useful function, and it is required per the federal regulation, kind of as a last check and balance that work that your companies have been hired for are actually occurring on the project. Um, WISDOT staff from both regions and bureaus conducted these reviews and focused on four areas, management, supervision of workforce, employees, supervision of workforce and employees, equipment and performance. The purpose of these reviews are to identify any red flags that would cause, that would be a cause for further investigation. Um, next slide. The next slide summarizes our efforts. Um, we interviewed over, uh, or we interviewed 38 DBE consultant firms. Over 600 plus projects were reviewed. And uh, this was done by an effort of uh, five WISDOT regions and three statewide bureaus. From this first round of cuff monitoring, we gathered valuable feedback and we will be making adjustments for this year. So we thank everybody that participated in this first round, um, which will now be a regular part of projects. And um, uh, any questions regarding the cuff monitoring or any feedback um, is welcomed. And I can't see the screen while I'm presenting. So yep. are there any hands up? I am not seeing any. Okay. All right, any questions for me on the update for a uh, close out of federal fiscal year 2022? Um, no, okay. Um, so this piece, Roz will plug it later, but we'll make sure that we just make sure you all know about the annual event um, next, next Thursday and Friday. Um, don't have a heart attack, Roz. March <laughs> 2nd and 3rd. Um, if you need more information, we'll get it to you. Um, I also want to um, show you this event um, as a follow up from all of the feedback that we shared at the last meeting um, when we met with Consultant Primes. One of the recommendations was to um, do some networking events uh, that we get out to various regions, not just in one location. So we have uh, our first event, February 8th, hosted with Grafe and Singh, and uh, we welcome any of you to attend. So if you don't have this 
uh, flyer, let me know. I'll get it out to you. If you know firms that may not be DB certified yet, but are potentials and you want to invite them to this event, we would welcome them too. Uh, so with that, I think it's a great segue over to um, Harvind and Mary Beth, who are going to share uh, their experience in mentor protege program and how they've been working um, together as we've brought this uh, program back online. So I'll hand it over to you two. Thanks. So probably just a couple logistical things. Can you guys see the screen? Can somebody give me a thumbs up yes. that it's there? Okay. All right. Well, um, I, thanks for uh, inviting us here and also thanks for uh, talking a little bit about the event we're going to be happening. Um, full disclosure, this is a little bit of a preview of that event. So if you are coming to both, you'll get you'll see some of the same information. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about that event. We've done some brainstorming on um, trying to make that event a little bit different. So um, we do have some planned interaction between the primes and um, the DBEs, that's not like speed dating. It's really more of a brainstorming event, kind of listening to each other and in kind of a rotation. So it, you won't just be standing around doing nothing. So if you haven't signed up, um, we hope that that at least is, sounds interesting and engaging to you and we hope that it's successful. So what Harvard and I were gonna do today is talk a little bit about um, our what we're calling a success story, I guess that's how we view it, um, and it really relates to our work on um, a project in the southeast region that was the east and west frontage roads project along um, the I-41 North South Freeway. So with that, let me see if I can change my slide here. Um, I think Harvin, you're going to do a little bit of intro on this slide. Yeah, so thanks, Mary Beth. Thank you, everyone, for, for listening. But yes, this is a success story that we really hope other people will listen to and move forward with. So part of what we did in order to be a success is we did some pursuit planning, and we actually had a contract that allowed us to uh, mobilize and do things. So Sting and Grafe um, entered into a formal mentored protege program through uh, the DOT. There is a process for that, and we agreed to pair with each other. Um, and what we did was we pursued a project, and we had Grafe on board, but we were the prime firm with the understanding that on this job, Grafe would be putting in some time and effort to make sure that on the design side, we were submitting exactly what would be required without creating um, issues for the DOT so that they, they could get confidence in um, in the team and in knowing that Singh could prime. So we had our PM, Sia Prosper. Um, we had design staff. And then Grafe had their PM and technical mentors, who were Steve and Bob. And then they provided support services in survey and environmental, but also in the design mentoring in supporting Singh's efforts to move forward with doing the actual scope of the job as a prime. Mary Beth? Yeah, so once we kind of um, had our formal relationship in place, we were trying to identify a project that we thought the region would think we could be successful with this arrangement. So we were watching the solicitations and identified um, the I-41 project frontage road. So it was a resurfacing project of about 2.5 miles. It was on the July solicitation in the Southeast region. Um, and we thought this could be successful. Uh, I would say the design complexity um, was something that, you know, it wasn't super high complex. It's a it's a resurfacing project. Um, the the scope of work was fairly straightforward. There was no structures. Um, a little challenge that we'll talk about as it came up. It ended up being a little fast track, but we originally thought that the timing was appropriate that we could um, work together in a mentoring relationship and, and make this successful. So the diagram there really just shows a kind of a picture of the project. Um, it's really the frontage roads from I-41 um, going from uh, State Highway 20 up to um, Northwestern Avenue. 
So what were the keys to success? I think Harvard and I both think there were things that worked well for our firm. So we, as the lead, as, as the mentors, set up weekly Microsoft Teams meetings between the Sync Design staff and our technical leaders, Bob and Steve. At every one of those meetings, we reviewed upcoming deadlines and we talked about whether Sing needed resources from Grafe to be successful. Um, Grafe also provided QA on all deliverers, all deliverables. So um, we had advanced deadlines coming to us where we then QC'd everything in Bluebeam and we required Sing to actually address our comments and reviewed to make sure that they got addressed. So that was what we thought was very important to the success of the project. Yeah, and for saying it was really very, very helpful for Graf to help us with the flow charts, task tracking tools that our team currently didn't have. And plus we have a very young design staff. They shared their sample reports um, and other templates that they had. But what was key is that in our conversations, Singh recognized how much more staff we needed to commit to be successful on a design project and to be successfully mentored. So as the DBE sub, it's not just about, okay, I, I got this job. You, you need to make sure for the long term that this mentoring you're getting is going to support the growth of your firm. So we ended up hiring um, more civil engineers that we could groom into doing more design work, which is the purpose of the, the program. So, as I already said, we committed um, at all at all levels of the organization. Mary Beth and I met quarterly to touch base and to be very brutally honest about whether Singh's team was doing a good enough job or not, or whether um, Grafe's team needed to do a little bit more. So we had that level of conversation. And um, what was really good about this project is that even though we had um, a a compressed schedule. We had on-time delivery of the plan set with no amendments. And what also helped is um, that we had additional dollars that were, were recognized for mentoring the contract, which really gave flexibility and confidence to Grafe to help sing, right? Everybody needs to know that there's, there's um, you know, a reward and, and that for us is time, right? So the fact that Bob didn't feel or Steve didn't feel that they needed to conserve their hours really helped in how much help Singh received. So, oh, and then the final thing that we did do that was actually very key is we had a post submittal meeting where everybody who worked technically on the project identified improvements to the process and improvements for future opportunities. And out of that, what was great was Grafe recognized where we had a weakness and supported us even beyond the project in getting a, a little more mentoring on some technical uh, CAD aspects of the design process. Okay, so what were some of the challenges along the way? Um, and just, you know, just so we don't say it was all just a, a bucket of roses, right? To talk about some of the challenges we had. So um, there was quite a, what I would call education component of the WIS.CAD standards that Harvard mentioned. Um, so we really tried to kind of hold hands with their staff and talk about how their CAD setup was and whether they were pulling all the stuff that WIS.CAD really provides. We spent some time on that. Um, and then also our project management staff um, was was spending time on mentoring versus spending a time on our own on Grace's own projects that we were leading, right? And and so that's one of the challenges um, as we look at future opportunities is that of course we want to lead our own projects and pursue our own work, and it is an element of time um, that's required to be able to do this. Um, for Singh, I think some of the challenges were that. Uh, the broad range of expertise that's needed for, for a project to really complete an entire project from zero to hundred percent. When you get into some of the hazmat, wetland, T&E, you know, threatened and endangered species, the surveys, you know, all those specialty elements, um, really understanding how many teammates they may need or, you know, looking for a one-stop shop like Grave to be able to support all those different areas was something that um, as as they look at leading a project could be a challenge. Um, 
things that we both had challenges with is the schedule was compressed, as I mentioned, really right when we came out of the gate. Um, they wanted to advance the project a year, but we were able to do it. So that that's a success and a challenge. Um, and then mid project, the US dot Southeast region changed the project manager, which I think happens to many of our projects. Um, but that on a fast track project can be a hiccup, but we were able to overcome that as well. OK, um, some of the consultant concerns or, you know, whenever you say concern, you can always rephrase that as opportunity. It kind of depends on the way you look at it um, that some of the primes may have is, you know, what about this forever challenge of are we training our competition to, you know, become, you know, take projects from us? And, you know, I think um, it's been a learning experience doing this project. Uh, Singh definitely has offices in in other locations that can that can maybe benefit us in the long run. Um, it also has been good to partner with a DBE firm that we can rely on and know their staff and know their relationships and have some successes that you know we really know our synergies of working together. Um, so they've really kind of become an extension of our staff. We have a project we recently won. Um, that has a DBA component that's necessary. And so it was just easy to call up um, saying and be like, hey, we need you guys to do this because you just did this for us. Um, and then, of course, we're assisting our client with the program goals. So, you know, I think all those higher level goals are, are really more important. Um, Harvin, you want to? Yeah, and also, you know, from from um, Singh's perspective, obviously, you know, as the protege, we we are gaining benefit, but once we are able as a DBE to to grow and have this experience, for example, we are in multiple states, so we can support and help our partners outside of just the market that they might be in. Um, but it's also now we are we are a proven entity, right? And there might be too many projects on a bulletin, but we're going to go lead one, and maybe you know, Grafe has another more important project that they really want to win but we can still share a piece of the pie because we can still team and they can be a sub and be confident in being a sub because i know there's the perception that you know if the dbe leads the job and the larger firm is the sub they're going to end up having to fix everything and do all the work when you have a good relationship like this then there's confidence in a larger firm being a sub to DBE Prime and confidence for the selections to be also made knowing that, oh, they had a good relationship, they've built this, they know they'll get the job done. Um, so it helps everyone in the relationship as well as the client as a whole. And uh, we put up here one of uh, our engineers who was who was part of this. She's she's been around a very long time. She said this is uh, the best mentor protege relationship. Um, this was the best ever that she's been involved in because oftentimes primes don't want to share as much. But unless you share and we do it together and trust each other, it it won't be successful. So we are continuing to pursue projects together with an understanding of what we can provide, what Grafe can provide. And we are looking for opportunities where Singh can lead and Grafe can sub and vice versa within what is a good project that matches Singh's capacity. So overall, while, yeah, you know, you may be training your competition, but you we're, we're all frenemies. So we have to work together. And it's always better to share the pie than just keep, you know, one or two people get the pie by themselves because we do have a capacity issue in our in our industry. So it's it's been a great opportunity. And we'll take any questions. That's what we'll do at the event. We won't take any questions right now. <laughs> and Harbin and Mary Beth, this is Deb. I just want to make a comment and I'm so glad you guys did this. And maybe we should have just done kind of an after action within the region too. But yeah, this was well, a that's really a good idea. Yeah. You know, and I think just because you know we knew this was going to be a good partnership. We never had any concerns. So I think we just, you know, said, hey, this is going to go really well. So thank you so much for doing this. This is really great. We'll take the show on the road, yeah. Deb. Don't worry. Yep, there you go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, if anybody does have questions, it is okay. Um, but first, I do want to thank both of you for thinking outside of the box on how to do this, you know, because we kept talking about we're going to have small purchase contracts. We're going to figure out how to do that. And then meanwhile, you sort of collaborated with Deb, who thank you, Deb, was like, yeah, we can, we can look at how 
to um to maybe fund this differently than we've done before and so we're now looking at sort of piloting this type of effort in the other regions um because now we have an example of it working um so so thank you for sharing that i see that bruce has his hand up do you have a question bruce yep <clears throat> excuse me yes i did have a question uh, earlier i think uh, mary beth and and harvin stated that you formed your mentor re uh, protege relationship first and then you pursued opportunities so they were just opportunities that were listed in the monthly uh, solicitations and your team just went for it at that and then the DOT uh, reviewed and and felt that you were the best qualified for that particular project then rather than it being set aside for mentor protege teams correct right. yeah I think I, I think you know, Deb can actually chime on this a little bit. I, I think it was important that we established our relationship first, and then we sat down and said what projects make sense. And then Harvin and I both also talked to the region a little bit, various project managers and Deb to say, you know, Grafe is really committed to this. Like, we're, this isn't, we're just not, we're just not signing up this little agreement saying we're being a mentor protege. We're, we're, we're willing to go as a sub, not just take them as a sub to us. We are willing to go and, and will guarantee success. And I, I think that, I mean, Deb can tell me whether I'm right or not, but I think that was a key piece. Yeah, yeah, we really like that. And we, at least in Southeast, you know, kind of like to keep an eye on that, on these NOI submittals. And and I know we've talked about doing um, small purchase contracts for these kinds of things, but I think as we all know, as we go forward, you know, we're capped at that $200,000 for the small purchase and, and that can get a bit limiting. And so I really like to see these kinds of arrangements show up through the NOI process. I think that just gives us more flexibility um, and can, you know, look towards maybe a, a bit larger projects, you know, versus just um, being capped on these very small projects. Yeah, and, and Bruce, I'd like to just add, you know, it, it was a thoughtful process in picking the project because obviously we know our limitations and we have to look at our sub and how much, you know, they've got their own projects, right? So how much can they give us their key staff to support what we're doing? So this was a resurfacing job. It it was a good fit. You have to look for that good fit, not just the cool big project, but the project that the client needs to get done. We know we can do it with some help. And then we can grow, like Deb said, into larger projects. But the first project, you really got to make sure that if you're going to lead it, it's not worth it to anybody to bite off more than you can chew, because then it's just a bad experience. So just just think it through and and be open. I I have the people for that or I don't. Or I, I, let's wait another NOI. Whatever you need to do, um, and and make sure the size, et cetera, and the scope is is good for the staff that you have. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Do you think that it was critical that? Sing be the prime and Grafe be the sub? Well, I'll tell you that as a DVE, we have seen success with these relationships in other places. And as the DVE, we will never know the stress, the expectation, et cetera, of what it means to be a prime unless we're put in that position, right? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, we have to be responsible and accountable along with our mentor, right? That's that's why they're there. But there's a different, um, our people experience a different level of, of expectation when they know that they are on the front hot seat, right? Mm -hmm. So, and it, it allows another firm to know how to do all of the commercial as well as the technical things that need to get done um, on the prime side and, and doing uh, different unique submittals. That, mm -hmm. So Mayor Ben. Yeah. yeah, I think I think it depends on the on the firm and how the firm is trying to grow. Um, when Harvin and I met, she was clear that they want to do a full service design themselves. So I think in that type of arrangement, it is it is key because honestly, if if they're the sub to us, it's kind of our typical arrangement that we do sure. quite a bit, and it's not special. The reason this was special is that they were the lead and we were committed to supporting them. Um, and ultimately, to her point, it is on them. If 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 mm -hmm. they did not succeed with this and get the job done, 
um, I mean, we would not have looked good, so that wouldn't have been great. But um, but they were very motivated to make sure this was successful. Not that they're not motivated in other situations, but I think it was key for this one for the exact mm-hmm. reasons Harvin mentions. Plus, they're going to gain so much out of it. They now have a PM that's led a full service project with the Southeast region, right? So that's on their resume versus just sub to grave, right? Right. And I think that it does help the trust also, well, you mentioned trust and that's so important, um, but in WISDOT maybe, and Deb could speak to that, but in evaluating risk, while grave is not going to take over for saying, we could expect you're not just going to let them flail. And, you know, it's like, well, we tried our best. Um, no, you're <laughs> you're also going to be have a stake in this and and try to make sure they get what they need to um, to take it to the finish line successfully. And so that makes a lot of sense to me that that then the region um, or WISDOT in general can say, yeah, that that makes sense to us to to take this chance also. Does that weigh in at all, Deb? Yeah, that totally makes sense. Yeah. And I think this was that right balance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great. Well, I'm so thankful to you both and Deb for for sharing these experiences. And it's really informative to us as we um, try to make this a successful program uh, on on the consultant side and how can we do it. And and this is, a I think I've learned a lot and I think my team has too about how we can now replicate this in Southeast, but also in the other regions. Um, So thanks. Looking forward to our networking event. Um, Anyone on the call who's not um, already planning to go and would like to, um, we can include um, that link to this group also um, if you'd like to join us. So with that, thank you. Um, We can move on to our industry check-ins. If any of you are new to this meeting, I expand that to include everybody in here. So I will um, start with uh, with Dave for ACEC, um, but then I'm gonna hit all of you. So be ready to say something. Um, so Dave Bros, what's happening with ACEC? Thanks, Magdalena. Uh, mm-hmm. First, I just wanna echo everybody's uh, thank you to Arvin and Mary Beth for sharing your experiences is um, a great, um, summary. Also, Mary Beth and Grave, thank you for hosting our upcoming networking. I know when we had our prime call, there was a lot of interest in it. And I'm not sure how attendance is shaping up, but I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be a great event. So thanks for hosting that. Um, the one thing from an ACEC perspective, as we have the upcoming events listed, if we could add the ACEC TIC, the Transportation Improvement Conference, yes. is March 7th and 8th. Um, registration is open, the agenda is out there, and it should shape up to be a great conference once again. So that's March 7th and 8th if you don't have it on your calendars yet. Perfect, thank you. That's all. Okay, thank you, Dave. Um, I'm not sure, oh, maybe maybe um, I'm gonna go on to NAMAC and maybe Bruce is, are you representing NAMAC, Bruce? I'm not sure, I just know you're a member of NAMAC. <laughs> You might not be their rep. Yeah, I, yes, I am a, a member, oh, okay. but I'm, I'm not the rep. To, uh, okay. I have not been to our uh, latest meeting, so I would not okay. uh, do justice to to update on where we are. No, I don't know if no problem. who goes around or George. Well, what I can say on NAMAC's behalf is that they do have a new um, director of business infrastructure, and his name is Tim McMurtry. He will be joining us tomorrow at DB stakeholder advisory meeting. He's out of the country right now. Um, so I'm not sure if he'll ordinarily join this meeting or not. Um, also, Dr. Sabrina Robbins has joined the team at NAMAC um, to work on uh, external collaborations, engagement for NAMAC overall, um, getting good presence, um, participation, and, um, you know, really offering great services to industry. So that's um, that's a bit of what I know is happening at NAMAC, and I'll leave it there so I um, don't uh, give any misinformation. I know all of that is accurate. Uh, Jada, what do you have from FHWA? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good morning. Um, No, really good information today. Um, I believe I had missed the last one. Um, 
maybe so I I couldn't remember sitting in on it. Um, but no, this was really good. Like the presentations that were given earlier about the DBE commitments, and it's, it's giving me um, a lot of confidence, especially that we have the DBE goal methodology rolling out soon um, that we've already talked about, Madalena, and we're going to kind of start getting in prep for that. So, but as far as what I'm looking at in the numbers, they're looking pretty, pretty solid. Um, and I do look forward to um, being a part and attending the DBE um, Summit Workshop Networking Networks Summit Great. Workshop. Hopefully I said that correctly. Um, and to be able to um, meet you all in person. So, yeah. Great. Thank you, Jada. And as Thank Jada mentioned, we are going into that overall annual goal setting for the next triennial. We submit those goals in August. So we will be having discussions with this group and all of our stakeholders along the way as uh, we work towards presenting our next uh, triennial. So probably since this group meets quarterly at that point, uh, we'll be sharing where we're at with the overall annual goal setting and get some preliminary feedback. Okay, so I'll leave. I'm just going to go right through here on our list of attendees and maybe we'll um, end with Roz in case she has any support service updates she wants to share. So Angela at Stevens, anything you'd like to share with us? Yes, I will quick share. I think I'm trying to get on screen, but whatever. I'll quick share that we have formalized our mentor protege uh, with yes. AIRS and I uh, Really appreciate the Grave uh, Singh um, presentation this morning. I took a ton of notes, so I'm kind of scared now. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> very excited, very great. excited. Um, so that's our news. Thank you. Good. We are too. And I did see airs at uh, at the CE conference, and they are excited okay. too. So great. Um, yeah, I will be engaged and following along. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bruce, anything else you'd like to add? Yes, uh, yes, I too want to say thanks for the presentation by Harvin and, and Mary Beth and learning more about uh, how they formed their mentor protege relationship and, and equally important how uh, they were successful in, in being awarded a project. That's I've raised my hand even several months ago about being interested in the mentor protege program, but but then I, I the question was, how would we uh, get a project? Would would there be something, a, a mechanism where only mentor protege or or would it have to be a general solicitation? And and I, I do know from experience now uh, of late these last couple of years, it's been really uh, an opportunity more for uh, firms to get a project with the uh, DOT and uh, the small purchase contracts have been a great tool to my firm, and I'm really happy about that and, and winning work as a prime and, and developing our staff and capabilities and, and also winning work as a prime on mm -hmm. a couple of projects, especially upcoming uh, in March. We, we want a really great uh, chance to be the lead on a very complex construction management project in an urban setting that's we're going to put our best foot forward and, and make sure that we demonstrate that we're ready to take on those type projects on a regular basis. Um, uh, I am going to be on the panels for the DBE conference coming up in March. I'm on two panels actually, so I'm looking looking forward to that, looking forward to coming to Graves event next week. And again, just uh, say I, I enjoyed hearing about uh, the Mr. Protege program and I'm going to rethink how we might look at teaming or partnering with with firms that we already work with and and see if we can submit a proposal that's going to win us an opportunity to to develop our staff more. So thank Great. you. Great. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Uh, Christina at M Squared, anything you'd like to share? You are on mute if you are wanting to share. OK, well, if you want to share as we move through go ahead uh dale at oes what do you have good morning and good morning. i want to ditto the comments that everybody else had said thank you uh uh 
Singh and uh, Gray for their presentation on their mentor protege. We don't have any mentor protege here with WISDOT, but I'm not going to steal Matt's thunder because you're going to call on him next and he can talk about our mentor protege that we have with the federal programs and stuff like that. But we do a lot of teaming and uh, partnering and uh, I think it's a win-win. A you know, it's not really training the competition as much as uh, developing these relationships that I think the synergy is really going to be a win-win for everybody and even the client down the road. So thanks again for the presentation. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Why don't we go over to you, Matt, since we've got that good segue from Dale. Still um, on the thunder, right? No, I do. Are you going to hop on camera <laughs> or what? <laughs> I you like it that me? everybody's been going on camera. It's great. Oh, hey. Can you see my face? It's a little dark in here, but I can see <laughs> good you. Good morning. Yeah. Hey. I, know, I appreciate all the information this morning. It's great reports and and good to see these mentor proteges are working out. Um, as Dale had mentioned, we do have a mentor protege. It's in our A and E field, so we're not only a DBE, but we're also an 8A. So we've been uh, starting to do more work with the DoD. And that relationship has been very, going very well for us. So, you know, we look forward to uh, hopefully entering into one with uh, with DOT also. So mm -hmm. I know that Don's been working with you guys and there's been a lot of talk on it. We're looking for the right opportunities. So hopefully we can attend this event next week and, and really kind of start to solidify uh, what we'd want to do into the future for our next uh, mentor protege. Great, um, thanks. Yeah, oh, the only sorry. other question I've got is, is you briefly touched on this earlier today, but I, I you know, you know I'm, appreciate you guys hitting your goals. You've been doing a great job of, of hitting your goals year after year. Um, do you anticipate uh, seeing more goal setting on individual projects versus just uh, just DBEs at this point, you know, doing work? Is that something you're looking into? It is. And, um, you know, we look to certain projects that are going to be really a, a good fit for goals. Uh, right. Where we've been putting more of our energy is working with uh, the consultant primes to convey the message of it's really important to us that we're bringing in DBE participation and we're bringing in a diverse group of DBEs. And we know that if we set a goal, you'll likely work with the firms that um, you're comfortable working with. So what can we do to work together to expand um, who you would ordinarily work with? What, what kinds of things can WISDOT do? And what are the types of obstacles you see to doing that? Um, and sort of how how do we make it sustainable beyond goals that we can continually be bringing in um, new firms and helping them develop because you know as was mentioned um, we we can max out on capacity you know we've got a lot of work and so while there could be that thought of are you training the competition um, maybe to some extent but there's so much work that you can't do at all and so Thinking of that and reframing it as you're also helping train somebody who can work seamlessly on your team, um, and then maybe you take on more capacity. So we're kind of looking at it through that lens, um, but it's certainly on our mind that we want to have mechanisms by which um, we have more DB engagement and beyond um, the firms that we only know right now. So thanks for that that question. Yeah, I look forward um, to talking more about that in the future with you. So thank you. Yeah, and and we're always open to ideas. And I also wanted to say to you from your your AA experience that we would like feedback on how you're doing in mentor protege there because um, you know there's great ideas that are existing outside of what we're doing, and so we want to try to capture and move on that as much as we can. So yeah, anything I can share, sure. help you with. Yep, yeah, thank you. Great. Okay, so. Let's hop back over to Ilya. How are you? Anything to add? I think I always say your name wrong. I'm sorry. No, it happens. Don't worry about it. My name is Ilya. Uh, Ilya. Everybody calls me E. So okay. um, thanks again for having me. It's only my uh, second or third meeting, I believe it is. And uh, we recently got our first project with Wistot, so we're really excited about that. Um, mm -hmm. it's, I think it's um, State Trunk Highway 128 on the western side of Wisconsin. Uh, for those who don't know, I work for Professional Engineering Services. We're from Minneapolis. Um, this is our first foray into WIST.work, work, and we're super excited about it. Um, I'm going to be presenting at the Engineering Opportunity Day on the 16th, so also looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, just a newbie here, so don't haze me too much. <laughs> we're pretty gentle. Gentle crew in here. Um, thanks for joining. Nice. 
uh, and sharing with us. And if you have, uh, you know, mentor protege experience from working in Minnesota or other states, um, I'd love to learn more about that too. Cause we're Sounds we really like we, have we don't at the them. moment, but yeah, okay. uh, we're certainly interested. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Deb, anything else you would like to add? I think Deb also told me she had to hop off for something else. So that might be now at 11. Um, Harvind, I know you got to say quite a bit, but anything else you want to add outside mentor protege? No, all good. Come to okay. the event. Thank you. Uh, Benji, anything you'd like to add? Uh, yes, just a couple of quick things. Uh, we are going to have a DBE room at the Engineering Opportunity Days, so we would love it if everybody would stop by and say hi to us. We're going to have some presentations. Um, it's going to be mostly free form, so if you, uh, we really love for you guys to come and Stop in, say hi to us. We're going to have some giveaways. We will have the mentor protege information there as well. Um, some takeaways for more information on that. And we are also going to have some flash drives available um, to our DBE firms that um, contain valuable information on our programs, where to find resources, who to contact, all that stuff. So we're looking forward to seeing you there. And I see some names in the um, the people list here who we are hoping as the uh, prime consultants that you will join us in our networking session for primes at our upcoming event in uh, March. So if you haven't already sent that in, please send it in to me that you will participate. And we are giving the two for one for you guys um, registration, two for one registrations. So. Um, you'll be receiving an email, a follow-up email, or a reminder email, but I just wanted to plug that again um, before Rosalind gets into everything she's going to talk about. So thank you. Great. Thank you, Benji. Good, good points there. Keisha, anything you would like to add? Good morning. Oh. Um, no, it... It was a great meeting. I really liked the um, mentor protege section. That was awesome. So thank you for doing that. Great. Yes, me too. Thank you. Michael Rivera, anything you would like to add? Um, nothing at this time, just to echo the um, the progress and the interaction that and your efforts to uh, make more DBEs visible within the opportunities that arrive in the future and really expand that opportunity. Thanks again. Yeah, great. Thanks for that feedback. Kathleen, anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, nothing further at this time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mitch? Uh, <clears throat> sorry, nothing for me right now, no. Okay, thank you, Mitch. Mitch is very excited about beginning the overall annual goal setting with us. Um, I am. There we go. I'm so We're excited for all the new DBEs at uh, Entering Opportunity Day. Yes, that too. Um, all right, Mary Beth, anything else you'd like to add? No, nothing for me. Okay, thanks again to you and Harvind. That was really great. Randy, I think had to leave. I saw a note. Well, I jumped back. Oh, I jumped okay. Back in. Right. Uh, what, what I heard, I heard the mentor protege discussion. And I thought it was great. You guys continue to do great work and, and really nice to hear that discussion. It was very helpful. Great. Thank you. Thanks for that feedback. And that will take us over to Roz, who can share, uh, I don't know, annual event and anything else, Roz. Yes, I just wanted to. Hello, everybody. This is Roz from Roberson, and I'm coordinating the annual event. Uh, I just wanted to give an opportunity for everyone to actually see our new our new web our new website for the annual event. And it was starting mm -hmm. at the, uh, the starting at the home page. Um, just wanted to make sure everyone is aware that we will be at the Dale. So uh, if you're on autopilot, don't go to Ingleside. <laughs> so we'll be at the Dale. <laughs> That's know, right. Um, March 2nd and 3rd, 2023. I uh, wanted to show you our agenda. 
And so these are our, uh, we're going to open up. Uh, we're going to open up at 930. Uh, we got it. We're going to have our vendors. Um, we're going to have the vendors there at the, the wilderness uh, foyer from 10 to 11, starting, starting 10, 11. Then we're going to start a pre-conference uh, workshop, um, workshops, uh, Jeff. Uh, Russell, who's always doing an excellent job on uh, presenting uh, his workshop on uh, ethical practices. And then we have one on a the ABC of bonding. So these are going to be the first set of workshops, pre-conference workforce development. It's not good. It'll, it's virtual, but we also have a, a, a room for for in-person participation. And then we start off with the at 12 o'clock with our Secretary's Golden Shelf Awards luncheon. So we put in all the information together, program together for that. Then we'll have a break and then we'll get into our uh, first set of workshops for hybrid construction contractors, professional service consultants, and small business. So uh, you can select when you register, you can select which workshops you want to attend. Uh, we got one of Good Faith Effort Best Practices. We'll this one we're changing. It'll be the um the UCP directors and um uh, the uh, let's see who is it? Uh, Tanja Davis from the Suppliers Diversity. They're going to talk about their opportunities. We have one on cybersecurity. Then Madalena and Jeff Gus is going to talk about the DB program and what's that contract in 2023 and beyond. So that'll be a good one. Lessons learned from a business owner perspectives, tips and tools for budgeting and securing funding for small for your small businesses if you're interested in how to get some 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 more money. Um, emerging technologies and highway construction. This will be a, a WISDOT presenter here. Teaming synergy, partnering with a prime and building a win-win relationship. So that'll be good. And developing an effective elevated species for our um, OJT uh, graduates, branding your capability statement so that they can be prepared for the networking sessions that start on day two. Uh, we're going to open up with a breakfast power hour panel where Bruce and some other, we got two uh, contractors and three um, three mm -hmm. uh, consultants with uh, moderated by uh, Joseph Davis from Construction Business Group. Uh, Construction Business Group is also our awards uh, partner. I was going to say the S word. So, um, and Harvin <laughs> is on that panel too. Yeah, Harvin. Okay, yep, Harvin is on that panel too. Is one of the consultants, and then we also have our networking session starting at uh, ten thirty, and they all they go to uh, twelve forty five. I do want to mention that we will have a networking receptions um, sponsored by Whole Fleet um, U.S. Bank. Oops, I said the S word. <laughs> Partnered. Partners. We may partner. We may yeah. Partner so uh, registration, you can uh, hopefully I'll have I'll send this link to uh, I think Kathy already Kathleen has the link. So she if you if you haven't registered yet, um, you can go here to register. Just click on here. You'll create an account uh, with your email and your uh, email and the password so that you can always mm -hmm. go back in. Uh, these are accommodations. Uh, we want you to uh, register. Get your room if you haven't gotten your room yet. Uh, just call. You don't need to do it online. They don't. They don't have an online um, reservation, so you have to call the number and enter this. Give them this number, and you have your room registered. Um, well, I want to talk a little bit about partnership opportunities. Um, we have an awards luncheon partner that's Construction Business Group, U.S. Bank Networking uh, Reception Breakfast Power Hour. We got. Uh, we have um, WTBA. Mm -hmm. No, 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 not WTB. I'm sorry. Uh, we have we don't have anyone for these two yet. Uh, uh, registration welcome break is WTBA, and then we have um, who is it? AICCW as a refreshment break. We can take more mm -hmm. of these right here. It's just not limited to those right there. Uh, we're also looking at our vendors, looking for some vendors, and also business cards. Even though it says DBE, I want to get this up. Right. You know, get this removed because um, primes or contract any contractor can purchase a business card so they can have it stream on the app and um, at the okay. event. So yeah. I just wanted to kind of make sure that you guys are aware of partnership opportunities. Yeah, thanks. Um, so, and the just I just want to add there that um, as Benji mentioned, a very important and arguably maybe most important way for you to partner with us is to participate in networking um, because that's really where um, those discussions happen. Those relationships can be built sometimes for the first time. So um, if you're interested um, and haven't heard from Benji, which is probably unlikely, but if you haven't, 
<laughs> reach out to her and um, and then she can share more information with you about networking sessions. OK, thanks, Roz. Welcome. Um, OK, so you've got this site. We'll make sure that it's out there. It's definitely on the website if you go to the annual event uh, as part of Wistot's website. Uh, link right there to that annual event page. Uh, also to DB support services, I like to mention those pages that have been updated. We'll continue to update them, um, but DB or non-DBE, these are good resources. Also for you um, to share with DBEs you may be working with if you are not a DBE uh, to let them know that uh, there, there are ways for them to um, get some input, access resources uh, from us that and a good first step is on, on the web. So with that, I think we've gone through all our participants. Anyone else want to speak that I may have inadvertently gone over? Um, I'm looking through the list and it looks like I called on everybody. So if nothing else to add, then I thank you all for investing your time and your energy in these efforts and continuing to be um, wonderful collaborators with us. And we look forward to seeing you at the variety of events that are going to happen in between now and, uh, and our next meeting. So thanks. Have a good rest of your day.